Today we're talking about tube amps. How hard is it going to be to get replacement tubes and some stuff that you can do in the meantime to still get some pretty good tone? Stick around. How's it going y'all? My name is Cooper Greenberg here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, comment, and tell us what you want to see. If you're interested, we got a Patreon, we also got a podcast. Podcast, you can reach it through the Patreon or not. You'll find it anywhere podcasts are. It's a good time. Check it out. So like I said, we're talking about tube amps today, and it's kind of a you know special point in time to talk about it, not only because of obvious shortages due to global conflicts going on, but our trusty Hot Rod Deluxe, we noticed last week, uh, needs a tube replacement. And, you know, I was thinking, what's the best way to go about this? And maybe it'd be worth playing on the Hot Rod Deluxe a little bit so you can hear the sound, but I'm not going to do that. It's pretty unmistakable when you hear the kind of cracking and popping and just zero headroom going on. You can feel the tubes dying. Um, I personally have talked about it before. I have a Hot Rod Deluxe myself. And it gets pretty obvious when you need uh, to get your tubes changed. And so there's preamp tubes, some 12AX7s and a Hot Rod Deluxe, and there's also power tubes, like I've got right here, a 6L6. And uh, interestingly enough, we pulled this out to take a look at it today, um, and this is a Softec tube. Uh, so I don't think we're going to be seeing a ton of these very soon. And that's kind of a big deal, because most tubes are manufactured in Russia right now. Um, I Watched a video on it not too long ago that Russia's the big place. I think China had a factory as well where they were sending tubes over and production was stopped due to a fire. Um, if you want to check that video out, a lot of good information from Rhett Scholl. He's one of our favorites over here, other guys on YouTube. I'm sure if you're watching our channel, you've also seen Rhett Scholl, but he's a very, uh, very good presenter. He talks a lot about the death of the tube amp. I don't necessarily think it's that uh, dramatic. I think that you know supply and demand will probably be seen Maybe some American manufacturers, you know, he makes a point to say that it's not the most environmentally friendly or cheap process to uh, make tubes, and that's why a lot of it's been outsourced into other countries. But I think that demand, you know, there's a lot of purists out there. They're not going to want to give up their, uh, their tube amp tone. So we might be seeing a, you know, demand push some manufacturing in the United States. And, you know, there's also conflicting information. Is Russia going to stop exporting? Is it just going to get more expensive? I don't know what the deal is. I don't think really many people do. But the fact of the matter is it's going to be tougher and tougher to get tubes. And so if you need a replacement, I'd probably look right now. Maybe you can find some on Reverb. There might be back stock somewhere. They're probably going to be uh, prices jacked up, and that's just what's going on. But I think it's a good opportunity to talk about some alternatives as well. Luckily, we had another amp that we could use to demo today. This is actually on consignment from a very good friend of mine named Jean-Louis. Uh, he's been a longtime customer of the store, very good friend of mine, great music fan, um, just a cool dude. And he's actually moving out of the country, so he's consigned some gear. And uh, he brought in this beautiful AC30. Now, we don't carry Vox amps. We have in the past, there might be a chance that we could get them again in the future, but right now, our tube amp stock is pretty much limited to Fender and Boss. We have a lot of orange stuff, none of the tube stuff in stock, and just compounding on the supply chain issues from the last couple of years, we, it's been so hard to get just any tube amps in from anybody, especially Fender. Uh, production's been super low, so we got uh, Blues Juniors, and we got Pro Juniors. I haven't seen a brand new uh, Hot Rod Deluxe come in the store probably in three years. I mean, it's crazy. So it's cool to have something in the store that we don't usually have, Vox AC30, the legendary Vox amp. I have this ad that I kept um, from a long time ago that I saw. It's a photo of the Beatles in the early days with a bunch of Vox amps, and it says, the sound of the long hairs. I mean, speaking right to my soul. So I personally have an AC15. It's this basically cut in half. It's an incredible amp, completely different tonality. Um, it might be fun to bring it in, show you some of the sounds that I get with my Rickenbacker because it's a perfect combo. But um, the really cool thing about having the AC30 in the store is that we're able to finally make good on a promise that I, uh, I put towards you guys with the Strymon Iridium. Because if you haven't seen the video, you can click the link above. We did an Iridium comparison with a Deluxe Reverb. 
Um, and so basically, if, you're not in, uh, if you haven't been introduced to the Iridium, this is a IR and CAB, uh, IR CAB simulator, basically an ampless setup. So there's so many companies that have been putting these out, and I think the Strymon Iridium is probably the most popular. There's also the brand new IR200 from Boss, really cool pedal. But the goal here is to seamlessly kind of emulate famous tube amps to where you don't have to carry around. This is like 80 or 90 pounds. I mean, I was super out of breath carrying it in the studio, not in great shape, it's whatever. But this is a really nice little pedal. You got three settings on here. On the amp side, round, which is your deluxe reverb, chime, which is your AC30, and then punch, which is like a Marshall Plexi. You get three cab simulators that you can do A, B, and C for each one. Three band EQ, you can drive the amp, so it's not gonna be heavy distortion, but you can get that natural tube breakup sound, which all three of these amps uh, are pretty famous for. Uh, the level of output and then your room. And the room acts like a reverb, it's not a spring reverb. It's basically just kinda where you set your mic in relation to the amp. So you do get a little bit of room sound, but you're not gonna get a long kind of decaying reverb. Really nice way of kind of tackling an amp. So like I said, we did the deluxe reverb before. Finally got the AC30 in. So what I'm gonna do is show you kind of what the AC30 is known for. I'm actually gonna use a guitar that was also consigned by Jean-Louis. This is a beautiful ES135, which they don't even make anymore. So if you're interested in a really cool semi-hollow body, you gotta come to the store and check it out. Find, about, find out about it on the website, as well as this. Make it a package deal, you get the Jean-Louis collection. Um, but I thought this would be a perfect kind of you know guitar to use. Really nice, beautiful, semi-hollow, resonant sound with the chiminess of the AC30. Now on the settings, on the amp, I've got all EQs going up right in the middle, so it's not much you know, going on there. You're really just hearing the pickups. I'm on the normal channel low output because on any of the top boost or high output, we'd be blowing the roof off the place, so I want to keep it kind of tame. A little bit of reverb and the tone cut is right in the middle. So I wanted to keep it as simple showcase of the AC30 as possible. And I tried to recreate the same settings on the Iridium. I think we got it pretty close. Obviously, you're gonna hear differences, but when you're in the chime setting, which is right in the middle, the Vox setting on the Iridium, your middle becomes that tone cut control, which is pretty cool and kind of characteristic of the Vox amp. And you know, not a ton of drive on either of these sounds. I'm keeping it clean, but still want to dial in a little bit of that push, a little bit of that room to sort of try to counteract the uh, reverb from the amp you'll hear it's very subtle. But let's take a look, take a listen to these because obviously the AC30 is famous for a reason and the Iridium is Strymon's best selling pedal for a reason, so let's see how close we can get. Thank you. 
there you have it. There's a little taste of the AC30 and the Iridium through this beautiful ES135. Now the point is uh, tubes are going to be hard to find and if you have an amp, obviously uh, if you have a tube amp, you might have changed the tubes before. You might you know, not use it a ton. I think I the last time I changed my hot rod tubes uh, was probably five or six years ago. So they do I mean, I don't plug it and play every day. I usually just save it for gigs. And with that, you know, I'm not saying I don't play gigs. I play gigs, but the tubes last quite a long time. So you might be in a good place. And uh, you also might be like us over here with our other Hot Rod Deluxe. It needs a change. So luckily, I think we do have some tubes in our service department. I'm going to steal them, and we're going to put them in this amp. But it's a good time to kind of explore alternatives, whether it be running direct, running through an IR simulator like this, IR200, Iridium, there's a ton coming out. And then there's also these incredibly, uh, you know, intuitive and really advanced Kemper profilers and the Neural DSP. I mean, the technology to get incredible ampless sound is pretty much at its peak right now. I think what we're probably going to see is both markets getting better, getting larger, because there's going to be demand for tubes and tube amp production after this little hiccup, I think will go up. I think it'll drive more purists to invest deeply into stockpiling tubes like toilet paper and also investing in really nice tube amps because that's the sound that I think everybody wants. And then it's going to drive a whole other market where, you know, the neural DSP kind of technology is gonna you know, find its way into more and more homes and on stages and recording studios. I really like uh, when I'm recording, sometimes getting a direct in sound, plugging straight into the board, getting it super clean, almost Prince-like. And then there's also the opposite where you want you know, a Fender Twin Reverb with beautiful spring and just that tube warmth. And I think that there's really no right answer. The important thing is if you have a tube amp and you like it but you have never tried an iridium like this or anything of the sort it's really worth your time because I think that it's pretty impressive you know piece of technology the other thing is if you're looking if you have a solid state and you've been waiting to save up to get yourself a tube amp you want something classic it's gonna be really hard to find one um, but I would recommend if you can get out there and play them know what you're getting into because it is an investment but I don't think you'll regret it. Uh, tube amps are just beautiful pieces of technology as well, and the technology is outdated. Not a ton of other uh, industries are using vacuum tubes anymore, but they've stuck around this song for a reason, and it's because it's classic tone. So please let us know, comment below, have you gone ampless? Are you sticking to tube amps in your, uh, your setup? And I don't think there's any wrong answers, like I said. We wanna hear from you guys. Have you tried to order tubes and not been able to find them? Have you dialed in the perfect AC30 setting on your Iridium? Was I super way off comparing these two? Um, I think we did a good job, but you let us know. And like I said, if you want to learn more about not only the Iridium, because we have all the Strymon pedals that you could ever ask for, if you want to get yourself an AC30 that is used but in perfect immaculate condition, or a really cool ES135, he's got some other guitars too that I kind of want to show off on the channel. So thank you to Jean-Louis for bring them to us, trusting us with your gear. I'm glad we got to show them on the channel. And uh, you know, if you want a tube amp, now's the time. We got Blues Juniors and we got Pro Juniors and how can you go wrong? So find all that on alamomusic.com. Um, like I said, subscribe to the channel so you can hear about all the cool stuff that we're doing and check out our Patreon and we really appreciate y'all's support. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.